Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Mega Goal 6. In the previous lesson, we had writing. In this writing lesson, we talked about the mistakes. As we all know that this unit is about everyone makes mistakes. So the theme of this unit is about making mistakes and how mistakes sometimes lead to happy accidents or happy consequences or results. Today we will talk in the first part about the writing lesson that we had yesterday and we will focus on how to write a story about an accident happened to you and talk also about the outcomes of this accident. For example, before we write, before we start the writing lesson, we have some refreshing questions that could help you remember events and incidents from your life. For example, number one, have you ever made a mistake that has turned out for the best? When, where, and who was involved? This kind of question varies, or the answer of this kind of questions varies from uh, each one because all these questions depend on the personal experience. So each one has a different personal experience. So the answer of this one will vary from uh, one to another. After that, we have number two, read the text and find out. We are going to read a text on this page together. After we read the text, I want you to, to find out where did the incident take place, who was involved, and what was the outcome, and what impact did it have on the writer. Yesterday, we read this paragraph or this story together, and it is divided into one, two, three, four, five paragraphs and we talked about each one of these paragraphs. But before we talk about them one more time and revise it, revise it together, I want you to listen to the story again so we can talk about it after that. Page 14, 10, writing. I was traveling to London and had just gone through security check at the airport. When I picked up my coat, it felt a bit heavier than usual, but I quickly put it down to fatigue as I had worked through the night in order to complete some work before I left. I checked the time and decided that it was far too early to proceed to the departure gate, so I sauntered about the duty-free section of the terminal, having a look at displays. I was examining a computer case when I heard the announcement. Somebody had mistakenly taken a coat that was a lot lighter than his, and requested that the person who might have accidentally taken the wrong coat meet him at the information desk. I did not take any notice at first, but when the announcement was repeated for a third time, I stopped and had a look at the label of the coat I was carrying. I had never seen it before. When I got closer to the information desk, I saw someone who looked vaguely familiar. I smiled, holding up the coat. He smiled back, pointing to my coat. We exchanged coats and introductions. Surprisingly, we shared the same family name. We decided to spend the time left before our flights working out possible connections over a cup of coffee. As it turned out, we were both descendants of the same family. We simply happened to be in different places at different times. We found the physical resemblance quite amusing. We could have been brothers or cousins. We have since kept in touch and have become very close friends, or relatives, if you wish. If I hadn't taken the wrong coat at the security check, I might never have run into my long-lost relative. I would not have known of the existence of someone who looked like me and carried the same name. I would have missed the opportunity to encounter an important person in my life. Okay, now we have in the first paragraph as you are going to write your own story. In the first paragraph, we have the settings, time and the place. He mentioned the place, which is, I was traveling to London 
and had just gone through security check at the airport. So we have a particular space, uh, uh, a place which is an airport, and he was talking about his feeling, his situations at that time. I quickly put it down to fatigue as I had worked through the night in order to complete some work before I left. He's talking about what he was feeling at that time and he talked about the place and the time. Okay. After that, he started talking about what happened to him. Here starts the story. Okay. Here we have more details. When I got closer to the information disk, I saw someone who looked vaguely familiar. I smiled holding the, up the coat to the rest of the sentence or to the rest of this paragraph. We have here more details. After that, he found out that he has mistaken his coat with someone else's coat. Then he talked about the result of his mistake that he met someone who is uh, one of his cousins. After that, in the last paragraph, you talk about the lesson behind this mistake. He said, if I hadn't taken the wrong coat at the security check, I might never have run into my long lost relative. When you write your own or before, before you write your own essay or story, you have a chart here that is divided into two parts. What happened and what could have happened? Think of a mistake or an accident. It can be something that happened to you, someone you know, or famous person. Did it work out for the best or not? Think about how things might have turned out differently if it hadn't happened. Okay, now you write here what happened. Then you write here about what might have happened differently if that thing didn't happen or didn't take place. Use a chart to organize, organize your ideas. So now here, list all the details of what happened to you. Then think of the situation of uh, when this thing or if this thing didn't happen. And think about the outcomes of both cases. Remember when you write a writing or when you write a text, there are some steps or some advices that you can put in mind. For example, when you write a personal account or narrative, think about the people involved in terms of personality, personality physical characteristics, skills and abilities, behavior, feelings and aspirations. Also try not to restrict your account to a series of facts. So don't Include only facts in your story because people want to read more. They want to know about your feelings, about what happened to you, uh, your reactions, and so on. Include details and description which will get your reader visualizing places and people and speculating, predicting, and anticipating what will happen next. As you might notice in the model text, factual sentences are interspersed with personal thoughts. That's what we need to focus on. Personal thoughts are mixed, interspersed with factual sentences, comments, and feelings. Today, we have the 11th skill in this unit, which is form, meaning, and function. In this lesson, we learn some grammatical rules, we learn some vocab, and we try to work them together. Firstly, we will talk about, or we will focus on words connected with business. There are three kinds of business, or we are going to focus on three categories of business. Number one, doing business, any kind of business. After that, good businesses and bad business. For example, number one, doing business, we say a good deal or begin negotiations, or sign an agreement, buy or sell. All these words or phrases or expressions 
can be used by anyone who is doing a business or who is uh, yes who is doing a business number two good business boost sales new and improved an asset a valuable patent all these words and phrases or expressions are used in the good business boost sales new and improved an asset valuable patent in the bad business we have no commercial possibilities make a mistake slipping sales figures stop producing when we hear these expressions they refer to a bad business while these expressions refer to a good business now let's go to the to the uh, following part which is about the articles here in the articles we have a or an and the we have two parts a or an and the a or an are used with indefinite article or we use the indefinite article a or an before singular count before singular we don't use a or an we never use them before plural we never use them before plural this is the first usage for a and an number two we use them when we refer to a noun in a general sense if we are referring to a noun in a general sense something is not known in particular something we don't know it as it is something is not precisely uh, mentioned we use the articles a or an so we have two conditions to use a or an before singular count nouns number two when we refer to noun in general sense and when we mention something for the first time we have three conditions so when we mention something for a first time we use a or an before it we have a sentence here an example in an attempt to boost sales a well-known soft drinks company created a new improved formula okay in an attempt to boost sales a well-known soft drinks company here we are talking about a general sense we have or we are referring to a noun in a general sense it's a drinks or soft drinks company but we don't know which one is it so we used a after that we have a new it is mentioned for the first time and we also don't know which one is that soft drink so it is a new we used it because or we put a or an before the noun because it is used in general sense after that we have the second part which is the the is used or we use the definite article the before singular and plural nouns so this is the first difference between indefinite articles and definite article indefinite article are used only with singular nouns while the definite article is used with singular and plural nouns and when we refer to something we already know this is the second thing with the indefinite articles we refer to something or to, to a noun in general sense something is not uh, talked about in precise or in particular uh, number three something mentioned or defined this is the third difference we said about the indefinite article that we use them before something we mention for the first time after we mention it for the first time and we want to talk about it for the second time we use the definite article so we use it with something mentioned or defined before for example the new formula which was tested 
In 200,000 taste tests replaced the original formula. After that, we have the superlative and comparative adjectives and adverbs. Comparative and superlative. We use that with them. Superlative adjective is when we compare one thing with a group of things or one person with a group of people or one building with a group of buildings. For example, we say this is the tallest building in Riyadh. I'm not comparing it with Another building, no, I'm comparing it with the rest of the buildings in Riyadh. So it is the tallest. I used the with the superlative adjective. And also, we use it with comparative adjectives and adverbs. Comparative is when we compare two things. For example, I say uh, this building is taller than the other building. We are comparing two things together. After that, we use that to refer to inventions. For example, Alexander, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. We don't use the before the names of people, streets, cities, and countries. For example, Fahad is my brother. He lives in Main Street. He is in Dubai on vacation. All these things. People, streets, cities, and countries, we don't add anything. We don't add any article before them. Not the indefinite article, nor the definite article. They come without any article, as you can see here in this example. Okay, before we go to the next part of this lesson, Let's remember that we use the indefinite article an, we have two indefinite articles, a and an. We use an with any word that start with a vowel letter. For example, we have the word egg. We have the word egg. It starts with a vowel letter, which is e. So, we put an before this word, an egg. And we have five vowel words, a, i, o, u, e. Any word start with one of these five letters, it takes an before it. For example, we can say an egg, an ink, an orange, an apple, and so on. Okay, now let's go to the second or to the next part. We have count and non-count nouns. Count nouns name things that you can count. What is the meaning of something that you can count? For example, you can say this is one pen or there are two things in my hand. These things are countable. These things are count, okay? The non-count things are the things that you can count them for many reasons. Sometimes because they are like liquids or they are so tiny that you can't count them and so on. Count nouns name things that you can count. They have singulars or singular and plural forms. In singular count for nouns, we have here a warning and an iceberg. Plural count nouns two warnings and three icebergs. We just add S at the end of the noun. Noun counts, non-count nouns, name things that you can't count. For example, advice, information, news, time, furniture, etc. They don't use A or an, and they don't have plural forms. So these words, this list of words, we don't use or we don't add a or an before them. Why? Because they are non-count nouns. We don't add a or an before them and we also don't add s at the end of them. So it is a mistake to say informations. The correct word is information. Even if you mean many 
informa more than one information. If you mean one information or a hundred information, you only use the word information without adding any S. Okay, after that we have expression, expressions of quantity. Quantity means numbers of things. Numbers of things are the quantity. For example, you say the quantity of people means the numbers of people in, the, in this classroom. We have some and any. Some and any. Use some in affirmative sentences. Affirmative means something or a sentence that doesn't have a negative form, doesn't have the word not. And we use any in negative statements the words that have not usually and in questions use some or any with non count nouns and with plural nouns for example in the affirmative there is some news in the negative there isn't any news in the question is there any news so any is used in the negative with not and with the questions after that, we have there are some newspapers and there are not any newspapers or are there any newspapers. So there are no differences in terms of uh, changing some or any with the affirmative or negative if the, if the sentence is uh, or if the noun is uh, count or non-count or even if it is singular or plural. After that, we have five sentences here. A company or these sentences have gaps and I want you to fill the gaps with definite or indefinite articles. Number one, a company rejected the patent for number two, William Orton was offered the patent for invention called the telephone. Orton may have made Worst business mistake in history. Number four, Alaska had been considered a burden rather than asset by Russia. Number five, replacing the old formula with the new formula proved to be mistake. The company brought original forma, formula back quickly. Now you can pause the video right now and do the exercise by your own. And after that, you can go on with the rest of, this, of the lesson. Okay, now let's go to the page where we have all the answers. Here we have a company rejected the patent for the telephone. Number two, William Orton was offered the patent for an invention called the telephone. Number three, Orton may have made the worst business mistake in history. Number four, Alaska had been considered a burden rather than an asset by Russia. Replacing, number five, replacing the old formula with the new formula proved to be a mistake and the company brought the original formula back quickly. Now we have an exercise where you ask to put these words in the box in the suitable gaps. Number one, what are you good at? What is right for you? Number two, you should choose that you will find rewarding. Number three, if you attend, you will obtain a degree. Number four, if you have, you will earn a higher Number five, you should look at your and test your IQ. Number six, you should choose a, satisfied, a satisfying line of that you will never find boring. Number seven, you should ask your teacher for in order to choose the right path. Now you can pause this video at this moment, do the exercise by your own and complete this video after that. Now we will go to the slide where we have all the answers for each gap. Number one, what are you good at? What career is right for you? Number two, you should choose an, an occupation that you will find a rewarding. Number three, if you attend university, you will ob obtain a degree. Number four, if you have qualifications, you will learn a higher, you will earn a higher salary. Number five, you should look at your interests and test your IQ. Number six, you should choose a, a satisfying line of work that you will never find boring. Number seven, you should ask your teacher for guidance in order to choose the right path. Okay, let's 
Note that there is more than one possible answer for some gaps. So it's okay if you have some differences in some of the gaps. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you for attending uh, this class and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salam alaikum.